Having a weak second serve is a big problem at the recreational level. And maybe you find yourself having a pretty good first serve, uh, usually flat, like this. And then on the second serve, basically you do a slower version of this serve and just gently uh, tap the ball into the box. Or maybe you do a little better than the tap in and you have a slice serve as your second serve as something like this. The tap in second serve will work to some degree. At the lower recreational levels, returners will actually get confused by the slow pace of the ball and they might give you some return mistakes. But as you reach the higher recreational levels, the 4.0, the 4.5, uh, these type of serves uh, tend to be hit very aggressively by the returner. The problem with having a slice serve as a second serve is that the ball will have a lower trajectory. So even on a slice serve, you will not be able to hit the ball with full speed and you will have to be be careful as you execute the second serve as a slice. So this is not a good option uh, for the higher recreational levels. You might be able to get away with a slice serve as a second serve up to the 4-5 level, uh, but a lot of the 5-0 players will be able to hit slice second serves uh, very aggressively and put you under a lot of pressure because you will not be able to serve with a lot of speed. So the solution for you to play high level recreational tennis is to learn a kick serve. And basically a kick serve uh, has many advantages over the tap and over the slice as a second serve. And if we look at the biomechanics of the kick serve, we are going to be positioned sideways with our torso uh, when we make contact. And the toss is usually going to be uh, either at 12 o'clock or slightly over uh, towards 11 o'clock for right-handed players. As a result of that, uh, when we make contact, the racket will be positioned slightly pointing towards the left. And now, as we hit down, the racket will go up over the ball this way. Because we're going to be positioned sideways at contact and have our tip of the racket pointing towards the left, now as our hand goes down, uh, the tip of the racket will go up over the ball and making the ball uh, spin this way. Now this obviously is going to be great when the ball finally lands on the other side of the court and uh, the ball will be more lively and have more action. But there's another reason why a kick serve executed in this fashion is a big advantage uh, as a second serve. A flat serve and a slice serve will have the tip of the racket just slightly pointing towards the side uh, when the racket makes contact. And what that means is as the player is finishing there will be more of a downward trajectory on these two type of serves and the ball will usually clear the net uh, in about this, this level. And what that means is it is not such a good thing as a second serve because we are going to make more mistakes if we hit the ball with a lower trajectory. And if you don't possess a kick serve and are using the flat or the slice serve as your second serve, you know the fact that the ball is clearing the net lower uh, to be true. And maybe this is even happening at a subconscious level. Uh, you know that if you hit the ball too hard as your second serve, there's a big chance of double faulting and exactly that is the reason why you are slowing down your slice and your flat serve if it's used as a second serve. Now on the kick, because we have the racket positioned further towards the side, and now we're not going to immediately go down on the ball this way. The racket will travel up across the ball this way and that will keep the ball higher. It will not be as low of a trajectory and therefore once the ball crosses the net, it's going to clear the net a lot higher than any other serve. And this is fantastic when it comes to second serve because now not only do we have net clearance and are safe from missing into net, but also the ball will have a tendency to go shorter into the box and we're also safe from missing long. What about massive kick? Is this something that you should learn? Well, absolutely not, because there's no such thing as massive kick at the recreational level. Yes, there are some professional players such as Dominic Thiem and John Isner who can make the ball bounce extremely high, but this is something that's very rare even at the professional level. And most of the time what you're seeing at the high level is trajectory and not kick. So basically if I'm standing on the left and I'm serving to the ad side, I'm going to have a rightward trajectory regardless of what kind of serve I choose. So now if I uh, choose to hit a kick serve even at a slower pace, you can see that my ball is going to kick way to the right after it bounces and this is regardless of how much kick I put on the ball. Now if I do this in conjunction with kick, obviously the ball is going to shoot off way to the right. The true test and finding out how much kick you have on your serve is trying to execute a kick serve from the deuce side and having the ball uh, curve to the right if you're right-handed. And this is not something you should ever concern yourself with because the primary objective of a second serve, 
that struck with kick is control and not power. Yes, the big advantage of having a kick, in addition to having a higher trajectory and the ball landing in a safer spot, is that you can hit the ball with more racket head speed. But this doesn't mean that the serve is necessarily going to have more power. Anytime we're putting spin on the ball, we're in fact slowing the ball down. And exactly for that reason, because we are slowing the ball down by putting spin on it, we are then able to hit this second serve with a lot more racket head speed as opposed to a, a for example a tap flat second serve that we have to hit very gently in order not to overhit it. And a well struck kick serve doesn't even have to be that fast. Uh, 60 miles an hour is sufficient for the recreational level and you even see some uh, professional players uh, especially on the WTA tour that serve between 60 70 miles an hour and even the men will sometimes only serve uh, between 70 and 90 miles an hour and the speed is sufficient uh, for you to have a good second serve. If I hit a flat or a slice serve with that slow 60 mile an hour speed then this speed would probably not be sufficient but since I'm hitting the ball uh, with spin even though the ball is moving slowly it is rotating enough and making a lively bounce that the returner will most likely not go for the winner return and if they do they're going to make a lot of mistakes so a serve like this a medium pace second serve uh, struck at probably somewhere between 60 to 80 miles an hour is a serve that fast enough uh, even at the professional level of the game. So in order for you to have a better second serve, you must learn the kick. And there's no quick fix when it comes to learning the kick serve. You must treat this as a long term plan and do not have short term goals because this will only lead to frustration. Give yourself six months to a year to properly learn the kick serve because then once you have this serve automated and you do have the muscle memory you will eventually be able to use it in a match and the only way you're going to improve your kick serve and have it match ready is by repetition and without this repetition your kick serve will not be an automatic shot and you will not have the courage to use it in a match and now you're going to be stuck in this cycle where you're uh, not practicing the kick serve enough and then having to always go back uh, to your slice and your tap on the second serve so the only way for you to have a consistent kick serve that you are using in matches is by repetition. Now grab a basket of balls two to three times a week and maybe you can get up to hitting 2,000 serves a month but if you multiply that over a course of a year and these are a lot of serves and this is how you build muscle memory. If you're interested in learning all the fundamentals to the kick serve I have another video that's more detailed and step-by-step -step, uh, titled how to hit a kick serve I'm gonna put a link in the description below. If you have any questions about this video, feel free to comment and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.